Multiple sclerosis is a debilitating disease that can cause all kinds of nasty symptoms like vision loss, fatigue, and loss of mobility. And for many years, the cause of this disease was totally unknown. And doctors could really only tackle the symptoms as they came up, kind of whack-a-mole style. Thankfully, we now know what causes MS, and knowing the cause of a thing is by far the best path to a cure, right? Except that the cause in this case is a virus that nearly everyone gets, and every attempt to develop a vaccine for that virus has failed. All that said, will we ever find a cure for MS? Yeah, but also no, but also probably, uh, let me explain. Multiple sclerosis affects around 3 million people worldwide. And while MS often causes disability, it's rarely fatal. People often experience muscle weakness and spasms, vision problems, dizziness, and other symptoms. And the disease will progress differently in different people. For example, in relapsing remitting MS, symptoms will occur in the form of attacks, between which everything is mostly okay. Meanwhile, in the various progressive forms of the disease, symptoms will worsen steadily over time. And while the underlying cause was a mystery for ages, we have known the basic mechanism of what's causing those symptoms for a while. MS causes the immune system to attack a specific part of the nerve cells called myelin. That myelin surrounds neurons of the central nervous system, and both protects the nerves and helps them transmit signals faster. And when those neurons lose their myelin and get sent out of whack, movement and coordination gets a whole lot trickier. But why the immune system does this has been a harder question. For a while, researchers had begun Begun to suspect the root cause might be Epstein-Barr virus, or EBV, the virus that causes infectious mononucleosis, aka mono, aka that really bad sore throat that you got after making out with your lab partner in high school. And while mono can be a serious infection right when you get it, researchers are only recently learning how it relates to MS. New research has helped us be just about as sure as scientists can be that EBV is connected to MS. And we'll get to why they're so confident about that in a second second, but there's a puzzle that no one has really solved yet, and it has to do with just how common EBV is. About 95% of people get infected with EBV at some point in their lives, but only 0.04% of the population develops MS. So there's definitely something else that we're missing here. Like if 95% of people ate cheeseburgers and 0.04% of them developed a rare cheeseburger-induced disease, doctors would be looking for more specific things those people had in common long before they blamed the cheeseburgers. Maybe it's in the toppings bar or something. Still, the suspicion around a link between EBV and MS was strong enough that one group of researchers decided to pull blood samples from 10 million U.S. service members to trace the connection. And the sample needed to be that big because MS is so rare that under a thousand people in that entire sample actually had it. But they got what they needed, and the researchers were basically able to show things always happening in the following order. First, an individual's blood would test positive positive for EBV, and then they would develop markers that suggested nerve damage without showing MS symptoms, and then they'd start showing MS symptoms. And they were able to show that no other variable accounted for the emergence of MS. So once they knew for sure that EBV was the underlying cause of MS, scientists rushed to work out exactly how it does that. And efforts are ongoing but it seems to be at least partly a result of the immune system trying to chase down EBV and getting a little confused along the way. A 2023 study in the journal Science Advances showed that there's actually a good reason for this confusion. The researchers demonstrated that in some MS patients, immune cells are capable of targeting both an EBV protein called EBNA1 and a myelin protein called CRYAB, probably because EBNA1 and CRYAB have a short segment that's literally identical identical. So those poor immune cells are just doing their job of keeping EBV under control. They can't help that they just happen to stick to an identical sequence that we happen to be using, not just the virus. When you put it all together, it seems to go like this. EBV infects antibody-producing immune cells called B cells, and a different kind of immune cell called T cells try to shut down that infection. But they end up targeting myelin instead, which means that treatments aimed at either the infected B cells or the overactive T cells might help to tamp down symptoms of MS. A lot of the current treatment strategies are aimed at slowing down these immune cells. There are fortunately a bunch of options, and we'll include a good summary in the video description. But in brief, steroids can tamp down 
the severity of an ongoing attack by dampening the immune response, antibody-based treatments target immune cells directly and slow down their response, and other types of medications may reduce the frequency of MS attacks. It's great for MS patients that all those things exist, but if the cause is a virus and we vaccinate against that virus, MS goes away forever, right? Well, yes, but the problem is that EBV is a stubborn piece of something I can't say here. It's not like they haven't tried to vaccinate against the thing, but for a virus, EBV is ridiculously complex. It infects multiple types of cells, has a life cycle that takes place in multiple phases, and it even has multiple layers to its structure. Just picking the right part of the virus to try to vaccinate against has been a struggle. For example, a lot of efforts have targeted a molecule called GP350 on the surface of the virus, but none of them have been approved. One of the most successful candidates was abandoned when it turned out to prevent the symptoms of mono, but not infection with the virus. Although some researchers have suggested that this one's worth another look. After all, since MS is caused by our immune system going too far and the vaccine tamps down the immune system's response to EBV, that might be enough. Other vaccine candidates include GP350 alongside other proteins, and an mRNA vaccine that incorporates a couple of different sequences is in trials at the time we're writing this video. Of course, even if we had a working vaccine in hand, for it to truly stop MS, we'd have to get that vaccine to everybody. And a discussion of how hard that would be is kind of a video on its own. But trust me, it's hard. But here's the good news. A vaccine isn't the only thing we can do here. One theoretical treatment approach could be to target those confused T cells we talked about earlier. Or you could target the B cells where EBV likes to hang out. There's one approved drug called ocrelizumab that already does that. And we can always just try throwing some good old antiviral drugs at the problem. So what I'm trying to say here is there are options. It might be cheesy to say that knowledge is power, but in this case, it's even more true than usual. To explain what I said in the beginning, Will we ever cure MS? Well, yes, because we know the cause. But no, because we may never eradicate EBV. But probably because we have a lot of other options to pursue going forward. This episode was brought to you by this month's President of Science, McLaren Stanley. Thank you so much for being awesome. And if you want to learn more about becoming the next President of Science, head over to patreon.com scishow, and thanks for watching. 